Good afternoon. I like very much to speak after the lunch break. It's good because you have a lot of energy. So let me start with the words in the Eastern Baltic region. That means um, uh, Lithuania, uh, Kaliningrad district, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, with the region you can see, uh, at the EAA meeting in Glasgow, I spoke about the periodization in the Bronze Age in the Eastern Baltic region and gave the historiographical review of turning points <coughs> and play a significance uh, for the cultural and social development. The question arise about the transition during the Bronze Age or about that does really change. Wherever it is vital to reconsider by taking into account cultural peculiarities of this region, um, how important is the splitting of the Bronze Age into shorter sub-periods, and whether it's really enable us to recognize better the change of various cultural processes. Traditionally, the chronology of the Eastern Baltic Bronze Age is divided to the, uh, into the two periods, uh, um, and it's orientated to chronology of Oscar Montelius. Um, and the periods are early and Bronze Age, and late Bronze Age. During the last decade, the Middle Bronze Age uh, became more relevant. Mm -hmm. And it is also um, a discussion now, um, uh, sh should we divide the Middle Bronze Age in the sub-periods A and B? And this is not uh, an easy task, as sub-period A is uh, so-called Chinage culture um, as an identificator of this period, but however, uh, the only few Chinat fine spots in Lithuania, as well as in Kaliningrad district or in Latvia, could be interpreted as a heritage of prehistoric communication between separate communities. It seems that Chinat's culture constant existence in the considerate region is unlikely, and it cannot be used as a criteria for the chronological and cultural turning point as well as period B, uh, which is uh, period three and four, according to Montelius. Um, new tradition of inhumation in the Lejetian culture as indicators. And uh, by the way, inhumation was only a episodical phenomenon in this region. And the burials of the so-called Sambian Peru culture are dated from the period two, with the main concentration to period three, and people was buried with bronze artifacts, but typologically could be attributed to period three, as we can see in that slide. So, where is either solid basis for C-13 dates, no evidence for the cultural change to determinate uh, the Middle Bronze Age till now. The traditional periodization of the Bronze Age in the Eastern Baltic region is an early and late Bronze Age, and, and it is still relevant until now. And the late Bronze Age, that means periods four to six, is very important because in this period, we can really uh, recognize um, very important cultural and technologi technological changes. Uh, first of all, development of local metallurgy, as we can see. in different uh, hill forts on different places. And where are very specific types of objects produced, please take it in, in, into account, specific, specific types of axes and jewelry. Also, the same period, the Late Bronze Age, is uh, important with appearance of hordes, massive hordes. And we can see the sample. It's one of the earliest sample uh, from period four. It's uh, for my little store. 
But starting with the period five, five to six, where is a dramatic change in the quantity of the hordes. We are mostly concentrated on Sambi and Peninsula, where today we can count 67 hordes from the late Bronze Age to early Iron Age. The, uh, we have new data of, um, of this period uh, got from, from the hill forts excavated in Lithuania, and it is uh, data given uh, of uh, Vitanis Podenas, my PhD student, not published, and we can see that uh, uh, the data from the excavated hill forts are dated from 9th to 5th century or 8th to 6th century. Um, this is a time period where the axes were produced and where the hordes existed. So we can um, speak about the, the Tsefirts and data which are exactly, um, unless we think about the uh, Hallstatt Plateau problems. And Estonian uh, colleagues uh, have done uh, also analysis of wooden uh, remains in the bronze axis, um, also from in the X, one of the X from um, type Melar Akosno, which is were produced on uh, hill forts locally, but the uh, foreign form. And we can see the dates is uh, 918, 811 Calibrid BC, or it's a uh, 10th, 9th century BC. But the Melar X is a uh, which one? Here, it's uh, early, it's uh, very late, it's 510 to 371. And it is uh, exactly that period is where the axes were produced in the hill forts. It uh, is simultaneous with metal production on the hill forts and the production of that special time, uh, type of axes and also with appearance of bronze in the hordes. So that's why I take the hordes as a very important indicator for the changes. And first of all, it is an essential transformation in the material culture, because we can see in the hordes new material attributes like weapons. For example, this Estonian hort uh, published by Uwe Sperling, or also ornaments, these two examples, or this fantastic sample from Latvia, or also remains of metallurgical activities, ingots or so trash, it's unpublished hard from, with fantastic axes inside with wooden and organic, it's very interesting uh, complex. And um, also, uh, the composition of the metal objects in the hearts has changed. The fowler cupa appears, which has high trace element concentration. Some of the late bronze objects contain lead additional. So we can also see in the metallurgical composition the changes, not only in material culture. Also in the social sphere, hearts are uh, an essential transformation uh, because, first of all, uh, mm, uh, we can see connection with the hill forts, with the appearance of the hill forts. Um, also, hearts reflect uh, the group identity um, like, as a social cohesion, as a, a group activity. We can speak about uh, women's and men's um, in the hearts or about the activity of very special group. And where is a strong distinction between the hoarding praxis and our context? The inventory of hoards do not appear in graves or settlements as process of selected deposition. And the next one um, argument for, for taking into account hoards as very important decisional um, indicators, they appear to consist of collection of artifacts and scrap from various regions. It is not local. They are mostly imported objects and mostly from Scandinavia. And we can speak about uh, the importing society living here. And hearts reflect the interconnections between the societies. Special items were removed from one society 
and given to the other. The items in the hearts can be interpreted not as simple exchange things, but as valuable, as foreign, recyclable metal. As we have uh, samples in the Netherlands that Spohoort, published by David Fontaine, also with a very uh, similar, um, 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 similar composition and meaning. Hearts appear to consist of collection of artifacts and scrap from various regions, as I told, and um, that's why I am speaking about importing society. So why, uh, uh, to come to the question, who was the triggers of the changes? I think it was traveling metallurgy, just because we, we can catch very short period in the Hillforts where we can find the uh, activity of um, metal production, activity of foreign object metal production, not local. And we can date it, it's an episodical period. So we can speak, uh, seeing uh, and having in mind the connection with the, uh, with the Scandinavian region uh, and our region, but mostly Scandinavian, about traveling metallurgists. And it is possible that the groups probably moved from different parts of Scandinavia into the foreign landscape and lived here and uh, lived for a short time and left their graves and gave to the gods, that means hordes, according to their traditional customs. The local societies were included in these ceremonies as part of economical for example, metal supply, social, and belief system. The hoarding practice was connected with the new and more organized economy because of new technologies of recycling and transition of ritualized ideas. And it was, I repeat it, a short period of time, a transformation of economical and social processes. We have new um, hard funds which should be investigated in different uh, um, aspects, methodological and also dated, and uh, this uh, work will, uh, will be uh, executed under the support of um, Fritz Thiessen Foundation and the name of the project you can see here written. And um, I came back to the first um, I think and I am absolutely sure that we can interpret the hordes as a very important um, indicators of cultural changes in the late Bronze Age, in the past period of the Bronze Age, where we can see not only ritual transitions, but also economical transitions. Thank you for your attention.